Hi, good day, and uh, welcome to Hammy G120. Today we're going to discuss <clears throat> interval notation and inequalities. This is uh, section 1.4. If you have a textbook, it's page 34. If not, just kind of follow along. Okay, inequalities obviously use symbols. This is your less than symbol. Your greater than symbol, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal. So we use those basic symbols. I think of a number line and the lesser numbers are pointing to the left and the greater numbers are pointing to the right. So greater, lesser, less less than, greater than. So a couple of examples would be that negative two is less than A. Therefore, A is greater than negative two. It could be a situation where negative two is less than, say, zero. <clears throat> so zero is greater than negative two. And we can tell that by looking at a number line is zero, here's negative two. Numbers further to the left are gonna be smaller. Numbers further to the right are gonna be greater. So two is greater than zero, zero is greater than negative two. Okay, so these are your greater than numbers, less numbers. Anyhow, <clears throat> let's see if uh, inequality is true. Uh, let's try this one right here. 4x minus 1 is less than or equal to 3x plus 2. Let's see if this is a true statement. And the way we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to see if it's a true statement for x is equal to negative 3. And we're going to substitute that in and see what happens. So I'm going to replace this x with a negative 3. And I'm going to replace this x with a negative 3. And I'm going to calculate this is negative 12 minus 1, which would be negative 13. Is less than negative 9 plus 2, which is negative seven. So is that a true statement? Well, <clears throat> let's take a look at a number line. Here's zero, here's negative seven, and then negative 13 would be here. So negative 13 is smaller than negative seven. Okay, let me give you a simple one here too. Sometimes students get confused on this one. 2x is less than or equal to 4. And let's suppose I substituted in x is equal to 2. 2 times 2 is less than or equal to 4. Is that a true statement? That 4 is less than or equal to 4. Yes, it is. Because what I'm saying here is that 4 is less than 4 is false. But I'm saying 4 could also be equal to 4, which is true. So when we say something like this, we're saying the number could be 4 or it could be smaller. In this, if I have just a less than, then the number must be just totally less than a value. Okay, another thing we're going to talk about, let's take a look at um, and, uh, a couple other problems here. Let's say we had uh, x is greater than or equal to 3. On a number line, if I was to graph this at 3, I would put a solid dot, and it's any numbers that are greater than it. But another way we can describe this, and this is what we call set notation. 
We can also describe it by something called interval notation. And the way we would do that is we would say this number starts at three and it starts exactly at three. So we want an equal sign. So the closest we can come up with an equal sign is a bracket equal like that. And then where does this end? It continues all the way to infinity. So we'll put in infinity. You can put a plus sign if you want. Now, we don't know where infinity is. So if we don't have an exact answer, we put a parenthesis. And that's what we call interval notation. Where does it begin and where does it end? <clears throat> so let me try a couple other ones here. Let's suppose we had one like this. Um, <clears throat> X is less than five. Okay, on a number line, we would be here at five. We have an open circle and we're going towards numbers that are smaller than five. <clears throat> In interval notation, we describe this as where does it begin? negative infinity, excuse me, <clears throat> and where does it end? Let me take some of this drink here. <clears throat> and where does it end? It ends exactly, not exactly, it ends at close to five, like 4.9999999. So I'm gonna put a parentheses there. If it's exact, it's a bracket. If it's almost close, it's a parenthesis. Well, what about one like this? Okay, so what this problem is saying that you can say three is less than x is less than or equal to seven. You can write it that way, say it that way. But what it's saying is that we have a number here that's between three and seven, close to three, exactly seven. It's in between those two. Again, looking at the number line, here's three, here's seven. It's almost three, so we put an open dot. It's exactly seven, <clears throat> so we put a closed dot. And it's any number in between here. It could be 3.2, it could be 5.7, it could be 7. Okay, so how would I describe this with interval notation? I'd say it starts close to 3, but it ends exactly at 7. So I put a bracket. So it's between 3 and 7. Almost looks like an ordered pair, but we don't want to do that. You know, it's, this is interval notation interval notation. Okay, so we can use the symbol infinity, we can use a negative infinity, we can use between. Another way we could have written this when we graphed it is <clears throat> instead of using a full circle, sometimes we just use a parenthesis, half of a parenthesis, and here we would use a bracket instead of a solid dot. So a solid dot bracket mean the same thing. So that's a little bit of interval notation. So now let's take a look at solving inequalities. Let's try a few problems. Suppose we didn't have a clear cut problem. We had something like this. X plus five is greater than one. And we want to know what X is. So we simply We'll subtract five from both sides. Get X by itself, just like an equation. <clears throat> and we say X is greater than negative four. On a number line, X is greater, it's gonna start at negative four and it's gonna be numbers that are greater, but not exactly negative four open circle going this way going towards very large numbers. 
So we could write it in interval notation as negative four as it started exactly there. And it's going towards positive infinity, but we're gonna keep that an open circle too. Looks like I'm wearing a hat here. That thing, I'm gonna to have to fix it. All right, let's try another one here. Okay, so if we if we added a negative number to both sides here, it didn't affect anything. Okay, but what happens? Uh, what if I have a problem like this? Let's say I had two is less than. Let's make it negative two. Negative two is less than seven, right? Is that a true statement? Yes. Well, what if I was to multiply both sides by negative one? Well, then this would become a positive two, and this would become a negative seven. It would reverse. Two now compared to negative seven, two is greater. So this is an important factor about inequalities. If you have an inequality and you multiply it by a negative value, then it's going to switch symbols. For instance, if A <coughs> is less than B, and we multiply it by something that's negative, say C, and we say C is less than zero, that means C is negative. Then when I multiply by C here and C on the other side, the inequality is gonna change. When I multiply by a negative value, the inequality changes. So let's, let's try one like that. Let's see if we had, just a very simple one. Uh, let's say we had 2x, let's make it a negative 2x, is greater than 4. And we divide both sides by negative 2. This also holds up for division. If I divide both sides by a negative, the same thing would hold true. A positive 2, and if x was a, <clears throat> if I divided by negative 1 here instead of multiplying, it would switch things. So the same thing happens here. When I divide by this negative two, x is now compared to negative two, the symbol is gonna switch. So only if we multiply or divide by a negative. When we multiply or divide, by a negative number, what happens? The inequality symbol switches directions, changes. Very important, and that's a big rule. If we add or subtract, no problem. Just when we multiply or divide. So let's jump in and do a much harder problem. Suppose we have something like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this particular problem, I'm gonna use a little shortcut. I'm gonna to try to get my um, y is on one side and the x is on the and the numbers on the other side. So I'm going to add a negative 10y to both sides and I'm going to kind of do that in my head. Negative 10y, positive 10y, that's going to cancel and add a negative 10y here. Likewise on the other side I'm going to add a negative 16 to both sides to get rid of this. So I'm going to add a negative 16 here and a negative 16 here. So I'm adding a negative 10y and a negative 16 to both sides. Sometimes we say, I think of this as a line, cross the line, change the sign. Cross the line, change the sign. Or you could say switch sides, switch signs. Switch sides, switch signs. Anyway, you look at it, this is a negative 17y 
and this is going to give me a negative 20. And right now it's still greater than or equal. But when I divide by the negative 17, this symbol right here is going to change. And you want to make sure you change it. So we have y is less than or equal to 20 over 17, a negative divided by a positive, or 1 and 3 17 So if I was to graph this, Here's zero, here's one and three seventeenths. The symbol is going to be a solid line, or I could put a solid bracket going this way. And if I write it in an interval notation, it starts at negative infinity and then it's at, I'm just going to write 20 seventeenths like that. And does it end exactly there? Yes. So this is solid like that. So this is set notation. This is interval notation. All right, we'll just try a couple more and then that. Let's see if we can find some hard ones here. Okay, here's one. Uh, negative three quantity x plus eight minus 5x is greater than 4x minus 9. So first thing we're going to do is distribute. And a uh, negative times a positive is a negative minus the 5x less than 4x minus 9. We're going to combine like terms. <coughs> we're going to add the negative 5x. I'm going to kind of jump over this. We're going to combine negative 3x and negative 5x. I could change it to addition. I, I think I can handle it without it. I lost 3, I lost 5, I lost 8x. And I'm going to bring the rest down. <clears throat> now I'm going to do what I call change sides, change signs. I'm going to bring the 4x over, minus 4x, change the signs. I'm going to bring the 24 over, change the signs. I get a negative 12x is greater than, uh, what is that, 15, uh, positive, positive 15 here. <clears throat> now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 12. So the symbol is going to change, and I get x is less than, and I'm probably going to reduce this down by 3, call this 5 fourths, and I'm going to bring my negative sign up to the top, negative 5 fourths. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write just an interval notation. I'm going to write it as it's less than negative 5 fourths, so it's going from negative infinity two negative five fourths. And it's going to be approximately like that. Okay. Another thing you have to remember, if this was switched around, maybe maybe we had your negative five fourths here and your um, greater than here, say x. If, if this happens and I want to put the x over on the left-hand side, I'm going to switch sides, and if there's a negative involved, or even when I switch sides, I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to switch the sides. I'm going to switch the sides. It's like saying uh, negative 5 fourths is greater than uh, negative 2. So negative 2 now is going to be less than negative 5 fourths. Okay, um, one other one, maybe two other ones. Let's look at this one. This one looks pretty interesting. Uh, 
Okay, so on this particular problem, I want to solve this. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try to distribute this out. And what I want to make sure I do is put a one in front of this parenthesis so I have something to distribute. So this is 19 minus 2x minus 3. See, these are going to change. This was plus or positive, now it's negative. This was plus or positive, so now it's negative, negative 3. Is less than or equal? Here, the signs will not change. All right, let's combine like terms. So I distribute, combine like terms. I'm going to put the negative 3 and the 19 together. Sometimes it's good to circle them. So that's going to be a positive 19. Take away 3 is 16. Minus 2x is less than. Don't forget to write the negative down. 2x plus 6. I'm going to do my little quick change, quick change signs, change signs. And you can also put plus 2x on both sides or whatever. I'm going to bring this 2x over to the left-hand side. I think it's easier to have your variable on the left side on these inequalities. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, add a negative 2x to both sides. I canceled that. Negative 2x plus that is going to give me negative 4x. I'm going to add a negative 16 to both sides. Negative 16 and 10. Uh, 6 is negative 10. And it's still less than or equal to. Now I'm going to divide by negative 4. And my inequality symbol is going to change. So x is now greater than um, Four. Uh, it's greater than uh, five halves. Let me check this and make sure I didn't make a mistake on my computation. You know what I forgot? No, I didn't. Here's the 19. So that was um, checking my answer here, and I don't seem to come up with the right answer. Let me double check. Negative 2x, negative 3. Maybe I copied it different from the book. No. 2x and 6. Um, <clears throat> I added a positive 2x to both sides. Uh, and here's where I made my... No, I didn't. When I brought this over, it became a negative 2x. When I brought this over, it became a negative 16. I don't see any mistake on that. Oh, I see. I did copy a different uh, book. <clears throat> so this is the correct answer. Okay. And I, one other one. I don't want to spend an, <clears throat> a lot of time, but let's, let's say we have one with a fraction. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to try to solve this, and what did I do? What it is, it's a y, and the other one's an x. Let's make this a y. Let's make, I think I made up my own problem here. Let me, let me do this problem again. All right, we're trying to get one-fourth ay plus 4 parentheses, minus 17 is less than negative one half 4y plus minus eight, excuse me. Here we go, we got the problem correct. So let's see if we can distribute this. Now, <clears throat> rather than, I could use uh, what I call magic number and solve it that way. But what I'm going to do instead is just go ahead and distribute a fourth of eight. In other words, eight divided by four is two y. A fourth of four is going to be one minus 17. So this, this isn't going to scare me off. 
negative one half, half of four is two, negative two. Y and positive four. So sign change, no sign change. Combine like terms, two Y minus 16 is less than negative two Y plus four. Okay, let's bring over the negative 2y, and that's why you got to be kind of careful with the signs, positive 2y. Let's bring over the negative 16, positive 16, still less than, 4y is less than 20. Divide both sides by 4, they're both positive, nothing changes, so don't get switch happy here. Sometimes it doesn't change, and that's great. Write it in interval notation, it's greater than 5, it starts at 5. And it's greater number, uh, it's less than, less than five. It starts at negative infinity and it ends at five. So we can state the problem this way also. Okay, um, good luck to you on these problems. Try your best, see what you can do.